Jason, and I want to share with you the top five things you should do with a new Mac. Now, this is not for power users, so if you're an expert, man, you can go on to something else. But this is for your average user who maybe you've got a new Mac, you haven't had one in a long time, uh, or you're upgrading an old one, or you're a Windows user who just started using the Mac. These five things are going to help you. A couple of them are really essential, and a couple of them will just save you some trouble. So let's get started. Number one. Natural scrolling. Now, this is a thing for Windows users mostly. Uh, if you were using an old Mac, this might throw you off as well. Uh, so here's the thing. For a number of years now, Apple has encouraged us to use natural scrolling because they believe the way you've been using your mouse before has been unnatural. So uh, they want to make sure that people like you uh, adjust to the natural way of using the mouse or the trackpad. And really, this is all about the iPhone and the iPad. Ever since then, we've been using what's called a natural scrolling method where you put your finger on the page and the page moves up and you can notice in the little demo video in the system preferences it just shows you yeah you drag the page down you drag the page up that's not how it works in Windows uh, that's not how it works on old Macs all old, old operating systems on the Mac so this might throw you off a little bit so if it's just driving you completely nuts you can go to the I'll show you how I got there the trackpad settings or the mouse settings and the mouse settings it's right at the top and you can turn it off Okay, and you can also do it in the trackpad settings by clicking right here and turning it off. I recommend you try to get used to it. it took me a few days. My brain comp completely adjusted. Now it just makes total sense. And I'm like, wow, of course, this is how we should be using our trackpad and mouse. So I think this was a smart play by Apple, but uh, a little frustrating if you're not aware, aware of how to turn it off. Number two, set up your hot corners. Man, since Hot Corners were introduced on the Mac OS years ago, I, I have just, it's one of my favorite features. And But I still find that people aren't used to them or don't use them or not aware. And they'll come up to my computer and do something and all of a sudden windows will fly everywhere and they're like, oh, what happened? Those are Hot Corners in action. These are shortcuts that can make your life easier. So very quickly, let me show you how to set them up. If you can't find Hot Corners in the system preferences, just go to search and type Hot Corners. Boom, there it is. All right. So the desktop and screensaver uh, module uh, preference pane comes up and you just click down the bottom right hand corner hot corners now if you can just look here here's the list of things that you can do with hot corners um, stuff that you can make happen when you go to a certain corner and just one example the start screensaver is a great one I put that in my upper left so that uh, my screen so that my computer will lock when I walk away I have it set to lock up the screen lock up the computer after about five seconds when I act activate the screensaver so I slide it right up here my mouse in the corner screensaver kicks on I walk away when I come back my computer's locked I don't have to worry about it uh, so I think this is a great feature. Um, everybody should be using this. There's a lot of things you can do with it. And by the way, if you want to use a, um, a um, modifier key with this, in other words, I don't like my dashboard to just come on when I slide my mouse to the bottom left because I accidentally go down there all the time for some reason. So I like to hold down um, the uh, control button with that. So if you want to set it that way, when you click this menu, just hold down the button that you want to use as a modifier. So you say, okay, this will not activate the dashboard unless I'm holding down the control key as well. Okay. So when I slide my mouse down there, it's going to have to be, um, I'm going to have to have the control key held down while that's happening. So those are the hot corners. Love them. You should be using them. Using them. And if you're a new user, check it out, get used to it. It'll make your life so much easier. Number next, Three, go to agilebits.com and install 1Password. I am still amazed at the number of people I run into who have very simple, easily hackable passwords for their online logins. There is no reason for that, but people are doing it. So you need a password app that can help you generate passwords and save them. Okay, 1Password is great software. I use it on my Mac, my iPad, my iPhone. And basically, when you open up 1Password, it's going to require one password that locks down all the rest of your passwords under encryption. So I'm going to type in my 1Password here. And it opens up. And what I have here is a list of all of my logins. Okay, I can also put you know your debit cards and credit cards here. You've got secure notes uh, and so on. Uh, but it's got all of your logins, and you can find them very quickly. There are drop downs from the menu. There's drop downs in Safari for this. You can go up here and find your login and just hit it, and it'll go right to the website and fill in the password for you, and it will generate great passwords. So. 
that's I'm not going to give a full demo of 1Password right now, but please go and download 1Password or an equivalent software to help you manage your passwords. In today's day and age, look, there's no excuse for having a simple password like Rover1, okay? Number four, choose and install a VPN app. Now, this one's going to be hard to make simple, but I'm going to try my best. Um, this is for MacBook users. You are going out and you're going to be mobile at coffee shops, you're at the food court at the mall or at the airport or something, and anytime you're logging into free Wi-Fi, you should not do so unless you are going through a VPN app. So basically it's something you just turn on and say, hey, I want all of my traffic to go through this VPN server off somewhere else, and it's all going to be encrypted, and you don't have to worry about people snooping on the data that you're sending back and forth between your computer and perhaps your bank or something like that. It's protecting you from people seeing the information that you are sending over the web. So um, this is specifically for laptops, um, but I use it at home as well. Um, there probably is no best VPN service out there. You could do some searching and find a number of different things. I use VPN Unlimited. Uh, that's worked out well for me. I got a deal through Stack Social where I could uh, basically get an unlimited lifetime or, or a uh, lifetime membership, I guess, for a certain price. I paid it, and you know what? I'm getting my money's worth out of it, and in about two years, it'll pay for itself. I'm already almost to that two-year point now, and I'm still loving it. So I use this anytime I'm out and about. Do not go out there and log on to Wi-Fi without a VPN service, okay? It doesn't cost that much money, and it will protect you. Um, so... I'm going to leave it at that. Consider yourself warned. Number five is to choose a backup method. And this one is so important. I should have put this first, of course. Choose a backup method for your data on your computer. Okay, look, there's a few easy options to choose from. And uh, I recommend two things as a new user. Number one, go to System Preferences and open up Time Machine. Okay, and find... A hard drive on amazon.com or something like that and i'll put a link to one it's going to work out for you and back up all of your data to that external hard drive okay uh, use the time machine app or the time machine function in system preferences here you just select the disk it's going to be on and hit go now i quit using time machine a while ago because i'm using some other other methods but for an average user i think this is a great option backs everything up and if your computer dies you just plug into the time machine drive and boom you have everything back the way it was it's really easy i highly recommend that okay um, the other option is to use, um, and, and you might as well do both, is do Backblaze or Crash Plan, one of these online backup services. It takes your backup data and says, hey, we're going to send it off somewhere else. So if your house burns down, don't you worry. We've got all your data right here on our encrypted servers. And uh, so they're behind a lot of firewalls and all this. Nobody can get to them. Um, so I love Backblaze. I've been using Backblaze for a few years, I think, and it's really worked out well. You can go on there and you can if, if you lose your data, you can sign in here and get all your data back. You can also uh, control it in system preferences. There's a preference pane here called Backblaze Backup. And you can say, hey, um, I, here are my options. I want you to back up at like, you know, uh, 4 o'clock in the morning. I want you to do it and back up this other hard drive. For example, I've got an external hard drive called iPhoto. So I plug this in every time I open iPhoto, my, uh, my iPhoto. Well, now it's not called iPhoto anymore. It's just called Photos. But um, that's my hard drive that has all my photos on it. So sign up for Backblaze. Uh, it's backblaze.com. I'll put a uh, link again in the comments that will um, get you there quickly. That link is going to be an affiliate link. I think they give me like a half a free month or something if you click that and sign up. So um, whatever. If you want to do something else, that's fine. I just want to let you know on the front end. So these are the five things I think you should do on your Mac right when you set up. Uh, I know that you probably, some of you have some opinions as to some other things you ought to do first before these. Would love to hear it in the comments. Feel free to offer an alternative list there. And I'd love to read it and respond. So thanks for watching.